Mike here, the DRF race of the day, Thursday, January the 11th, race number seven at Aqueduct, a 62,500 optional claimer with a second level allowance condition hung on to it. We're going three quarters of a mile for fillies and mares, and let's take a peek at this field. Coupled entry, the one and one A for David Jacobs, and the two is Stonewall Star. She's your morning line favorite. Second start off a long layoff, Mike, and she might take a step forward from a fitness standpoint. Kind of feels like a, a reasonable way to look at her last race. Then off the layoff there, she probably needed it. She didn't make the lead outright in there. She contested it a little bit, got tired through the stretch. Um, all those things are fine. She could make the lead here, breaking from the rail, but she's the morning line favorite. And I, I would argue that this is not an easy spot for her. We'll take this race in program number order, beginning with the one Starship Defiant, the horse going second off of a shorter layoff. She was second last time out at this level, Mike. It was a race that seemed like it was dominated by closers. The pace was very fast and she got a little bit tired late. Yeah, I mean, it's off of a, a short layoff for her too. I, I think, listen, reasonable people can disagree about the trip she got here. Maybe you'd think she got into a little bit of a tough spot there down on the inside around the turn while the winner was sweeping up wide. Um, that's fair enough. I didn't think she had any real excuse in here. I thought she was only second best. Um, the caveat to that is this horse that wins this race, who was sort of a mediocre horse all throughout her career until Linda Rice claimed her, has now run two giant races in a row. No, that horse was much the best, and it looks like that horse has turned the corner. Starship Defiant was 25 to 1 in that race, likely going to be a shorter price as part of the coupled entry here. But that race was pretty good, and I agree with you. I thought the trip was okay. The 1A in here is her coupled entry mate. That's Taming the Tigress. This horse was fifth last time out, first time back for Jacobson. That race still produced three next out winners, Mike. Maybe this horse was just in a little bit tough. The third horse came back to win at this level with an 85 buyer. Yeah, probably wound up out of position in that race, too, a little bit too too far back in her first start for Jacobson. I, I don't really know what to do. Just because she's part of an entry um, with Starship Defiant, um, it seems like they'll both take a little bit of money here, Dan. And my real only opinion about Taming the Tigers is I know that on paper she looks pretty good in here. She's got figures that are going to make her tough. I didn't really like her, uh, Cal her dirt form out in California. Well, she misses the break in a lot of her races, and it's very hard for her, I think. She doesn't have such an edge over any of these horses at this class level that she can afford to spot horses any kind of a margin and make up that ground. Uh, if, she, if this entry is any kind of a price, fine. But Timmy the Tigress, to me, I think she needs the right setup and trip. Maybe Stonewall Star will provide some pace The number two. She's a multiple stakes winner. Um, and this is her first start off of a lengthy layoff, the race we're going to show right now. She ran okay, Mike. She was part of the pace that day. She ends up finishing third. Uh, Stonewall all star finished behind royal poppy and uh she ran fine yeah she did i mean she didn't you know outright make the lead in this race but she was right up there on the pace she contested it around the turn had a brief lead and just got tired uh through the stretch of the race she ran okay i do think six furlongs is a better distance for her um so they come right back at the same the same trip for her but again dan there's a little bit of speed to her outside and i think she's pretty good but i also think this is a pretty tough field and I think she's got to be on a send mission from the inside post. Her best races have come when she's on or right there when the field turns for home. Desert Dalliance is the three. This horse scored at a first level allowance for Rudy Rodriguez last time out. Got right up close to the pace. Wins comfortably. 76 buyer speed figure. She's very consistent from a buyer standpoint, Mike. Now she's got to deal with a slight class hike. Yeah, these are tougher horses. And I guess just from looking at her on paper, you would have to argue that she's going to need to improve uh, to beat this field, all things being equal. That being said, Dan, I kind of liked her early in the I thought she ran some good races sprinting along the way. I know she's done fine when they stretched her out, but I like her sprinting, and I really like this performance. First time out for Rudy. 13-time winner, Peak of Chic, is the number four. She's seeking her third consecutive score. And what's nice about this mare is she is very versatile. She can go to the lead. She can rate off the pace if it's hot. Here's her most recent start against fellow New York Reds, and she just took the bull by the horns in this short field. The pace is not fast. It was a nice ride, and it was a great trip. It really was. She had all the best of it in here, but it was a really clever ride here. They just went right to the front against weaker horses than she's going to be facing um, in this race of the day on Thursday. Dan, I won't knock her two most recent starts, but I don't like her that much against this field. She is finishing it up pretty well. She's a solid enough mare. And again, if the if uh, Stonewall Star decides to go from the inside post, maybe she'll attempt to rate. The five is Bank on Anna. She's a rock-solid New York bred stakes winner in her career. She's coming off a little bit of a layoff. Her last race was in the Iroquois. She faced a pretty good field. That runner-up came back, placed in a second-level allowance at Oaklawn with a 75 buyer speed figure. Maybe just getting Lasix again is going to work for this one. That could, It feels like that's one of the things you really want to pay attention to with her. 
her, Dan. I mean, she could be a little bit inconsistent there. You just don't really know what you're going to get from Bank on Anna. But her good race really gives her a chance in here. And she does not need the lead to be effective. This is the kind of horse. I'll wait and see what kind of price she is. But I'd be using this horse. Three of her four wins have come with Lasix. The last race on a wet track. If you want to forgive it, time before that, you're into stakes placing against New York Reds at Saratoga. We'll move on to the number six in here, and that's Missy Greer. Missy Greer was fifth last time out, going a one-turn mile and a second-level allowance. But look at the horse she was in against. Comparative came back to win the ladies, a stakes race in New York over the weekend with an 89 buyer speed figure. Missy Greer just kind of got cooked up in that race on from a pace standpoint. Now cuts all the way back in distance. It was a pretty hot pace. that. Uh, she was involved in last time she did not run well in there it's at least worth noting that the the first and third finishers were right up close in there as well they hung around missy greer did not um there are a couple of races i guess you could get to that suggest she could be a contender in here dan i wonder if she's good enough i think this is a tough field for her and she's a horse who wants to be part of the pace and this pace might be fast well, Stonewall Star is the morning line favorite. I wonder if the seven downtown mischief, I wonder if she's the horse to beat because her most recent start was her first race off of a significant layoff. And that was the Starship Defiant race. It was a very fast pace and she was the one off the layoff carving out those fractions. She had every right to get tired. Now she has a race under her girth. I looked at it the same way. They went seven off the long layoff. And not only was that distance maybe a little tough for her and obviously the winner's in really good form right now, but... She was just pressed on the lead the entire way there and wound up getting tired through the stretch. All in all, I thought it was a pretty good place to start off the layoff. She was undefeated sprinting before they threw her into the victory ride against Maple Leaf Mel. Um, I think there's a real chance she moves forward here. She does not need the lead to win here, and she's drawn outside the other speeds. And completing the field is the number eight, Royal Poppy, who's hit the board in eight of 11 lifetime starts and exceeded the buyer par for this level with her win two starts back in a first-level allowance race. Now, in her first start at this level last time out, I'm not sure if that race came up as strong as the race on Thursday. Royal Poppy, though, was kind of hung out four wide entering the turn and through the stretch, and she'll end up finishing a solid second. Um, I like her tactical speed, especially if some of these speeds go. I think a nice outside stalking trip uh, is there. She obviously has a race from a buyer standpoint, but she's, I think she's stepping up in class. Yeah, I agree too. Um, she runs fine in here though, because she was four wide around the track. That's Stonewall star right to her inside now, who's getting tired. Um, Royal Poppy's only going to be second best here, but but she ran fine. She has the big race too back there, and it's worth noting, it's on a sloppy steel track. There's rain in the forecast for the middle of the week here. She might get another wet track in this race. Before we take a look at our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. Let's take a look at our top picks for our Thursday race of the day, race number seven at Ackrook. You're going with Downtown Mischief. I want to use Downtown Mischief in any kind of multiple race wagers. I think she's the horse to beat. Yeah, you mentioned that you thought she was the horse to beat when we were talking about before. I think you're right. I think this is a good spot for her. And I think she ran just fine last time with some things that were really working against her. Wet or dry, it doesn't matter for downtown mischief. Maybe Royal Poppy is a wet track move up. So keep an eye on the weather. I do think a pretty good trip is coming. And maybe she gets lost in the shuffle with some of these stakes for horses making their second start off a little bit of a layoff. 7358 for Mike, 8745 for me. Good race of the day on Thursday. It's the seventh of the big A. Good luck.